Christian Anarchist here. <clears throat> so, I decided to make a little refutation video concerning this guy named JackSmack77, which some of you may remember from my video that I did concerning his view towards uh, modern translations in the NIV and the fact that he's King James only is that only goes about preaching to only the, the 1611 authorized King James version is the infallible translation and is the word of God that's been preserved. If y'all want to check that video out, I'll leave a link in the description that you can also check that out and see what uh, I've seen from some of the videos that he's posted on it. But, another thing. He's expressed his concern towards the topic of Arminianism, Calvinism, that they're both satanic doctrines, which kind of confuses me. So, I don't know. I mean, he believes that two sides of the coin are, you know, not part of the, you know, the coin, in a sense. So, I don't know, like, here's the thing. He goes on in this video that I'm about to refute called, The point of Calvinism is to damn souls to hell. Now, you can find his Arminian and Calvinism videos elsewhere because he makes a lot of these. But this is the one video that I decided to see, and it bothered me from what all he said that I think that he was really much in error with what he was saying. So, let us take a look at what he's saying. Now, if you think about it, everything Calvinism produces is nothing but a bunch of rotten fruit, a bunch of flat-out lies and total garbage. It's all demonic, it's all wicked, it's all a bunch of stupidity. Any saved person who's got the Holy Spirit living inside of them would reject Calvinism right away. And that's just the way it is. The only people that accept Calvinism are the unsaved. These unregenerate, stupid, reprobate bastards who are going to drop into hell, and that's what Calvinism produces, is a bunch of hell-bound, wicked, false prophets who are full of pride, and they're going to drop into hell. Period. Alright, right off the bat, we already have some problems. He's only just saying, you know, Calvinists, uh, you know, believe in this satanic doctrine kind of stuff. You dumb Calvinists, it doesn't save people. So, he already just goes into bashing Calvinists. Let's see what's next. Here's why. Number one, they say that certain people cannot believe. That we're too dead in our sins to believe. And that God has to regenerate people before they have faith. Well, that, just, that doesn't happen. That never happens. So, therefore, according to this, according to this system, nobody ever gets saved. Alright, so... He doesn't believe that people get regenerated before they uh, were born, even though Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So, we have the predestined... He has already chosen us before the foundation of the world began. <sighs> Sorry about that. Sort of uh, yawning a bit. But we have that. And then, of course, believes that, you know, the, the idea that there are certain people that can't believe is, you know, wrong. But the reason why I would disagree is because there are certain people who can't believe because they won't believe. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. He can't know them, because they are spiritually discerned. This is a person that lives too much in the world, and cares less about the spirit involvement. There are people that will admit that even if they were to see the, see God or know that God exists, they'd still reject him because they don't like God. They don't like the the Christian morals that's set into it, the morality of it. So they just don't like what's presented. If you don't believe me, here's uh, Texas atheist Aaron Raw and what he gives out for when he's asked the question, if he was given 100% evidence of God, would he still believe? If I could prove to your satisfaction that God, the God of the Bible exists, would you worship him? No. Excellent. If I believed that God exists, and I believed that it was the Bible God that existed, I would not worship it, because it is a criminal thing. Now, if a better God existed than the one in the Bible, 
I still wouldn't worship it, but at least it would be worthy of respect. Now, the, the non-Calvinists who don't believe in this garbage, they're not going to let this trash stymie you know, their, you know, their faith in Christ. Now, they get saved, they go to heaven, period. But the stupid Calvinist, the stupid unsaved Calvinist stays lost because they don't, they don't have faith. They don't believe. You can't believe, according to them. Okay, already we have a weird straw man right here saying that Calvinists can't believe. Apparently you just completely ignore the doctrines of Calvinism and what Bible verses we even go to for our claims. Like John chapter 6 verse 44 where it states that no one can come to me unless the Father who hath sent me draws them and I will raise them up on the last day. So, already we have a part where Jesus is saying, Nobody can come to me, Jesus, unless the Father who sent me, Jesus, uh, draws them, the people, to him. So, already we have a thing where there are people that can believe, but only if uh, the Father allows them to in the first place. And we already discussed earlier, there was the natural man who can't because he only focuses on the material world and not the spiritual world. Of course, they take away free will. They don't believe in free will. Now, Revelation chapter 22, let's go ahead and turn there, makes it very clear. If you want to be saved, you have to come to Christ, believe on Jesus Christ, receive the gift of eternal life. And the Bible teaches free will right here. And if what they're trying to do is tell people you don't have free will. All right, I think you're misunderstood because we need to be careful when we define the term free will. There is libertarian free will, and then there's compatibilism free will. Libertarian free will is the view that we can make decisions and choices without the need of a divine intervention between God, which I personally find this to be uh, flat-out heretical due to Proverbs uh, chapter 16, verse uh, 9, I believe. It's in their hearts... I'm, I'm going to try to read from the King James Version just so I can make sure to be on the good side of this. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So yeah, the heart can come up and devise a plan, but the final action is decided by the Lord, whether it is carried out or not for his glorious will. So, I don't know. Let's see what else he's got to say. They are blaspheming the word of God. And they are saying that the word of God is not true when the Bible says, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Oh, yeah, yeah, so they can come only if the Father allows them, as we pointed out earlier with John chapter 6, verse 44. And then there's that word, whosoever will. Whosoever will. Whoever has the ability to will, the will to want Christ, you know, the natural, the natural man, the atheist that is so unrepentant, he doesn't have the will because he doesn't want to choose uh, God, so he doesn't want to choose Jesus. I mean, do you believe that at least? Can we come to an agreement on that? Now, this is an invitation for salvation, and this means everyone, okay? The reference is Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. Let's go ahead and turn there. Salvation is offered to everyone, but the stupid Calvinist says, no, it's not. It's God chooses who's going to be saved and who's going to be damned, when in fact, if that were the case, God would have chosen every Calvinist to be damned because every single one of them is going to hell, period, if they've bought into that garbage. Uh, okay, um, I don't even know where to begin there because I just honestly think that, you know, you're just trying to take the logic of election and you're like because calvinism seems you know very uncomfortable god wouldn't want them in heaven i mean why not so i mean next point their whole life isaiah 55 1 says ho everyone that thirsteth come ye to the waters anyone who's lost can come to the waters of life and drink of the water of life and be saved forevermore after the bible teaches this is in isaiah right okay well that's the prophecy. Now, what does the pro the prophecy thing that was being mentioned, you know, Jesus, what does he then later say? Once again, John chapter 6, verse 44. Read the verse. 
whenever you get a chance. Number three, they believe in the wrong Jesus. They believe in a Jesus Christ that cannot save. And I'm sick of all these stupid, these stupid reprobate Calvinists out there saying, well, he died for his own. Jesus died for his own. He died for the elect. Hey, you're going to be saying that forevermore in hell as you burn and writhe around in the lake of fire. You can sit there and chant that all you want like it's some stupid incantation or some stupid cantillation that, that, you know, that the devil came up with. Go ahead and just keep chanting that garbage when you rot in hell. You unsaved, stupid gospel rejects. That's all they are. <laughs> okay. I, oh, man, I don't even know where to begin with that. He starts with the idea that, you know, that we believe in a Jesus that can't save, which I find hilarious because we believe in a, uh, in a Jesus that can save, and that he has saved, and that he had none of the blood uh, was shed in vain, you know, because they they believe, if I'm guessing right from what he's saying, he believes that Jesus died for all, but there's some that will go to hell, like he says Calvinists, because they chose something different. So, he wanted to save them, but he just, you know, he failed to do so, because, I don't know, you know, that's... Uh, that's what I'm getting from is a little deal. But fortunately, we do have scriptures to refer to when it comes to uh, this particular thing that he's talking about. First, <clears throat> we have to talk about Matthew chapter 25, verse 32 through 33, where, you know, Jack is apparently against the idea that Christ died for an elect, or, or that, you know, that he died for all, you know. But what, about, what does the Bible say? Matthew 25, verse 32 to 33. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them, one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. So, and note the analogy that there's sheep and goats. Sheep are, Christ is referred to as the shepherd, and my, he uses the terms, my sheep hear my voice. So, that you can tell from this that the sheep mentioning in Matthew 25, verses 32-33, is his followers. And then you have the goats, which, if you can get the whole analogy, the, ghost, the goats, they are basically the people that are the non-believers, and there's a reason why they're divided, especially in the sense of, the sheep being on the right hand and the goats being on the left. One of them is going to an eternal hellfire. The other one on the right is going elsewhere. So, we have that. And, I don't know, it sort of bothers me that he views this as a thing that Jesus, that we believe in, can't save people. We believe he did. And for the people that he definitely chose to. And he was successful in saving every single one of those people that he chose. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5, Having predestined us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And then verse 6, To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. So, he is, by his grace, by Jesus, we are saved. The the elect is in the doctrine, and you no, know, he chose to save them, and he was successful in doing so. But then there's some that they just don't get it. They don't get saved because they don't want to be, and that's the whole deal. I mean, and another thing I would point out is John chapter 17, verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are mine. And the thou that Jesus is referring to is the Father, the Father who has given him, for they are thine. He's talking about the sheep. The Father has already given Jesus his sheep. And that's one of the passages in the verse. That's what it's talking about. I mean, at least try to reference to these other passages that the Calvinists point to and see if you can find some way to put your theology on this instead of, you know, going about, oh, how satanic and how stupid Calvinism is. Please, just... I don't think Arminians 
are damned. I don't think whatever the heck you follow is damned. I don't think Wesleyans are damned. I think it's a, just a different doctrine and that we're disagreeing on certain things. So, yeah, I'm starting to get my voice a little raised up because of this passion that you got and how irritating you can be when it comes to how you treat people. Okay, First Timothy chapter four makes it clear who the real God is, and it makes it clear who the real God, who the, excuse me, who the false God is as well, or who the real God is not. The real God is not the God of Calvinism, which is the devil, and that's all there is to it. All right, yeah, might want to be careful when you go there, because remember what blasphemy the Holy Spirit is. Uh, if the Calvinist God is correct, then. You did just try to say that that Calvinist God is the God of, is, just, is not God, but is actually the devil. So we'll go into an equation where we're going to compare it to a satanic being. And this is something that Calvinism can at least be considered biblical based on some of the doctrines that it has in its core beliefs. So might want to be careful where you're going with there. First Timothy chapter four says clearly. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. Now who's the living God? The living God is the God that sent his son Jesus Christ to die for the sins of the whole world, period. Universalism, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's what you believe. You've made some things stating that you're, you think universalism is garbage. But died for the whole world. Um, so either he succeeded and they are all saved, all going to heaven meaning the entire world's going to heaven, or that you believe that he died for, for the ability for people to go to heaven, even though he's, the passage says, died for the whole world, and just, you know, some of these people uh, didn't go, and probably because the way you view Jesus has failed to save these people, that they, he, Jesus failed to save them, that some of his blood was shed in vain, I mean, I don't know, just, just that's a fruit, fruit for thought. And it says right here, okay, we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. If he's not the Savior of all men, he's not the living God, he's a dead God, he's a satanic, stupid, futile, weak, pathetic worthless God who can't save anyone and he's, you're going to drop into hell believing in him. Pir yeah, I believe that if he can't save the people he would promise, I believe that that isn't exactly a uh, you know, a very alive God. I think that would be very weak of God. But, you did say if he's not the savior of all men, then he's a dead God. So, if you believe in pe that people are in hell, then you're pretty much admitting to yourself that you believe in a dead God that chose to die for the entire world, all, all people, but yet some of those people that's mentioned in all uh, men, all people, they're in hell, so Jesus didn't save them apparently. So, <laughs> it's, it's kind of one of the weird things I find about this, Mr. Jack. And number four, here's why they're going to hell. Calvinists add, they, they add works to faith. You gotta have the works. You gotta have the good works. Really? When did we say it's a salvation by works? We quote Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 9. We vote, quote, go, quote a whole bunch of scriptures that show that it's by grace we've been saved. I really think you're just trying to straw man yourself up to where to paint a very bad picture for Calvinists because I think that's all you're able to do for the situation. You got to do the works, they say. Hey, if you have to do the works, it's because you don't believe Jesus Christ is enough. You don't believe he died for your sins. You don't believe in the finished work of the cross. And that unbelief is going to send you straight to hell. The Bible says, he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And the other reason they're going to hell is because they believe you got to persevere to the end. Um, yeah, I believe we do. Gotta persevere to the end. I mean, the Bible states that we gotta persevere or endure to the end. I mean, Matthew 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So, and this is from King James Version, by the way. Uh, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So, checkmate. 
Persevering to the end is an asser, is an asseveration or an assertion that Jesus Christ did not pay at all. And that you're not already saved by his grace, like the Bible says. So you have to persevere to the end to see if you make it. And of course you don't make it. You don't make it, you just go to hell. Well, what did the scripture say? What does he mean by endure to the end and the same shall be saved? You hear the words of Christ, depart from me, I never knew you. You know, you stupid, wicked, unsaved Calvinists. I thought the verse was workers of iniquity, but I'm glad to see we can change the Bible up a little bit to just add you stupid, wicked Calvinists in there. This is about as more accomplishing than the conservative Bible. So, nice uh, little touch-up you decided to do there. Persevere to the end. Hey, just persevere your way to hell. Okay, the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath, present tense, everlasting life. Those who are saved, they have everlasting life. And we're not, we don't have to persevere to anything. All right, first off, Matthew 24, verse 13, like I've quoted. Second off, you stopped at John 3, 16, but then, you know, you don't go to the thing where it says, Whosoever believeth uh, will not have everlasting life. The Greek terms used in that points out to whosoever uh, wills or believes or wants to believe uh, in Christ. So whosoever believes, whoever has the ability to believe in Jesus uh, shall not perish but have everlasting life. So if you're going to quote scripture like that, especially John 3.16... So you, that's the only thing Calvinism does. It mocks God, it mocks the Bible, it rejects verses. It, you might as well just cut verses out of your Bible that say, whosoever, whosoever believeth, whosoever will. Just cut that stuff out if you're a Calvinist. You, you, make, you make God into a hater, a wicked devil of a God, and that that's who they worship. And then you can just die and go straight to hell. That's where every Calvinist is going if they believe all that garbage. Well, to be fair, God does say he hates certain people. He hates those that do wicked. He hated Esau. There are several Bible verses where they can show God's hate. He's not all loving. There is a yin and a yang. He loves people. He loves the sinner. But at the same time, there's a thing, there's things about the, there's a thing about the sinner that God hates. And there is several scripture in the Bible that points to this. Prove me wrong, why don't you? Prove me wrong, Mr. Jack. Now, there's one exception to this. A person got saved before they entered that trash, and if they did get saved, I don't see how the Holy Spirit would even let them believe that stuff for one second. That stupid, demonic, wretched filth. False doctrine straight out of the pits of hell. Satan came up with it. He's laughing at every Calvinist out there who's going to join him in hell forevermore, and they're going to burn forever, and they're going to be like, you know, duh, of course I'm burning in hell. What do you think? I rejected John 3.16. I rejected the fact that Jesus died for the whole world. I rejected the fact that it was free grace. I rejected the fact that salvation is instantaneous. And I, I worked my way to the end. And I persevered to the end. And guess where I'm at right now? Hell forever. Because you don't persevere to the end. Jesus Christ persevered to the end. And it's, it's his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his shed blood that is our salvation. Nothing else. But Calvinists didn't believe that. Of course, they got a weak God who can't save everybody, so then they got to fill in the gap and do their own good works and persevere to the end. It's proof that they're just proof they're unsaved. That's all I have. Well, thank goodness that he's done with that. This, I don't know. You're claiming that God saved all men, especially the believers, with the verses you go to, but there are Calvinists going to hell at the same time, according to your logic, even after stating that in a passage in your interpretation that God saved all men, especially the believers, but that Calvinists are going to hell, uh, there's others, you know, the non-believers are going to hell, universalists are going to hell, Arminians are going to hell, they're going to spend eternity, God uh, is going to let them perish or send, let them spend eternity in hell. So apparently your God didn't save them then. If that's the case, that he saved all men, but somehow he fi either he's wanted to, but failed that they all went to hell, or that, you know, I, I just don't get it. 
so this is why I guess the Calvinists believe in this kind of guy is because we believe that he chose who he went to the to, to die for. And I mentioned the scriptures earlier that there are people. There's the sheep, and then there's the goats, and then there's the people he predestined before the foundation of the world. There are people he's chosen, and he died for them, and none of the blood was shed in vain. I don't know. I just think that your view, view of God uh, is just ridiculous. Um, I don't think you're not going to heaven. I don't think you're going to hell. I can't make that judgment because I am a human being. I am not the judge. I am not God. But you apparently seem to think so that you're going to say that these people are going to hell because they disagree on minor doctrines. I mean, we're crying out loud. Are you going to say the Messianic Jews are going to hell as well just because that they focus on a Old Testament view in their own theology? You're going to try to convert them to Gentile ways? I mean, seriously, Jack, I, I, I hate to say this. I honestly do. But as a brother trying to give advice, grow a pair. All right? So that's all I have to say. I hope that you see this video and that you uh, get some advice and words of wisdom from this and that hopefully we can talk and have a more edifying conversation about this. So until then, Shalom Aleichem, peace be upon you, because I wish that upon you. God love you. Subscribe to this channel, you know why? Because he's the cream of the crop. So if you're the cream, you gotta subscribe. Dig it!